To create a new report, we must first select Create, then Report Wizard. Make sure that the report is based on the query that you've just done, rather than the table, otherwise your search results or anything that you've done to that query won't be applied in the report. Now when we read the question paper, we've got to show certain fields. So we need to show the VIN field, the model field, the power field, engine size, cost price, color, port, distributor, and delivered price. Once you've done that, click Next. If we look through the question, we might want to add grouping, but in this case it hasn't asked us to do that, so we can just click Next and ignore that screen. But we do have to sort the data into ascending order of VIN number. So let's select and select VIN, and then click Next. It's asked us to make sure that it's in landscape, so we're going to do that. Next again. This screen just lets you select the style. I'm going to ignore that. And here we could do as we did with the report. We could say report question 47, which would make it easy to find. But if we type in the report name here, then that will mean one less thing to edit when we create our report. So the heading has to be dispatched dispatch manifest port whoops I should have put a bracket in there port and close bracket so that's the report name or the report heading click on finish and we have our report created now we were supposed to show all of the data labels in full these hatched marks mean that we can't actually see of or see all of the data and I'm sure that the VIN number is much longer than three numbers so the easiest way to do this would be to close the preview and select the layout view. Now if this property sheet bar is in the way, just close it so you give yourself more room. And in that particular layout view, it means that we can just drag fields to make them wider. either way or we can narrow fields. So I'm just making sure that everything fits and it's all nice and neat so that when the examiner looks at the printout he can see and read everything and hopefully we should get full marks. Again, make sure that you scroll through the whole thing so that you can actually make sure that everything is readable. That looks fine. Other things that we had to do was calculate the total number of cars in the selection and place it at the bottom of the report. So we basically we want to find out how many cars there are. 
So if we change the view to design, we can do the calculation in here. So it says calculate the total number of cars in the selection and place it at the bottom of the report. It hasn't said which field it is, so we basically we could do the count on any of these fields. Now to use the report footer, which is where the calculation should be, I need to actually drag down here and show the report footer. Easiest thing to do, click on the field that you want to use, right click, go to group on, and then select the total underneath it and select which particular thing you want to do. So we want to count the records. And hopefully that should give us the total number of cars that are going out from Port Brest. So let's change the view, see if it's worked. Scroll down and it says there are 43 vehicles. Now we've also been asked to put a label on to the left of this that is called Total Cars for France. So let's change the view back to Design and we need to put a label beside that. So select the Label tool, draw on our label and type the words Total Cars for France. and then I'm going to move it up as close as possible to that and then change the view to make sure that it's worked. Let's scroll down. Total cars for France. That's worked fine. I could narrow the 43 box a bit and move this box over to put it a bit closer and to make sure that it, you know, the examiner thinks that it's associated with that number 43. So I'm just going to change the design view and move this over slightly. And I might, even if I maybe line that to the left, it might be easier. Let's run it and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. It's up to you what you want to do with that. The last thing we need to do is put our name and candidate details on the page. So let's go into the design view and select the label tool. Now we need to draw it in the page footer, not the report footer. If you put it in the report footer, your name will only print on the last page that's printed out and therefore when the invigilator comes to give you out you know your answers or your results from the printer they might not give you the first page of the printout because it doesn't have your name or candidate details on it so select report footer and the first thing we need to do is center number I should put a capital C at the start of that, which would make it look better. Okay, we need then to put on the candidate number. And the candidate name. Now that's got to be on the left so make sure that it's left aligned so you see the alignment buttons aren't actually working until you click out and click into it again let's move it over right to the left and we're going to have to judge or adjust it with the, the date field so let's see what happens scroll down um, I'll get away with that I think and there we have question 47 of paper 3 version 2.1 of the main June 2011 examination paper finished or that particular question finished the only thing I need to do now is print it so if I go into print preview and make sure we check it as you can see my name is on the first print so I should get that when it comes out of the printer and it's also on the second print That is the end of this tutorial. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you.